Tonight, yes, more NFL and more NFL headaches. But Adrian Peterson was suspended indefinitely while he had someone come to his defense. Peterson's own mother asking the world to stop judging her son and his parenting methods. This after this Viking superstar was suspended for beating his four-year-old son with a stick. And other NFL player is pulled off the field. Yet again, another story relating to domestic violence and the National Football League. The Arizona Cardinals Jonathan Dwyer now banned from all team activities. We're not just talking about domestic violence as it pertains to the NFL. Tonight we hear from two survivors who share their moving stories as they talk openly about their abuse and what it took to escape it. Plus, we will also talk politics. We'll head to New York where the governor preparing to take on his next opponent, Rob Astorino. Both sides launching a series of attack ads. We're going to be joined by a guest here who says that the damage may already be done to some national prospects for Governor Cuomo. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French, and again here, uh, we talk about the NFL and domestic violence. Adrian Peterson, he remains benched here by the Vikings after he was hit with felony charges for beating his young son. Peterson, he is banned from playing. However, he is still receiving a paycheck in the meantime. Now, while sponsors like Nike have been dropping Peterson like a bad habit, his biggest fan is still coming to his defense. His mother, Benita Jackson, said, and I'm quoting here directly now, when you with those you love, it's not about abuse, but love. You want to make them understand what they did wrong. She went on to say, I don't care what anybody says. Most of us discipline our kids a little bit more than we meant sometimes. Now, of course, this week we saw others come to Peterson's defense, like Charles Barkley, who said the form of punishment is common among many black families, especially in the South. But his voice is hardly unanimous. Many others across the nation, both black and white, who are on the other side of the debate, saying beating a child under any circumstances is just plain wrong. This interesting piece um, came from Georgetown sociology professor Michael Eric Dyson, who wrote a piece um, in Washington Post uh, say, speaking out about, quote, whippings of African-American children, which he says is a form of punishment deeply rooted in this country's past, dating back to slavery. He wrote, Adrian Peterson's brutal behavior towards his four-year-old son is, in truth, the violent amplification of this belief of many blacks that beatings made them better people, a sad and oblique justification for the continuation of the practice in younger generations. So a whole lot of perspectives on this. And on Wednesday, we asked you at home to weigh in our conversation. And last night, many of you did just that here. We asked you where that line ought to be drawn when it comes to disciplining your own child here. And Beverly said spanking is okay if done right. Open hand on a on a clothed bottom, uh, definitely no need for objects to be used. I use spanking as a last resort. Faye said, there's a huge difference between beating and spanking. My grandson responds best to a smack on the backside than to, ta than to uh, taking everything he loves away from him. But we got different perspectives. Denise said, Adrian Peterson crossed the line. There is no excuse for what was done to the child. I am African-American. I was disciplined by belts and swizzle sticks. I did the same to my kids because that was all I knew, and that's all I grew up seeing. That was the norm. I have never seen this type of bruising on the child. And finally, Bolivar says, talk first. If they don't listen, threaten them, but never, never hit them. He even said, don't insult them.